Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Fruitful Vine Podcast. I'm Tyler. I'm here with my pastor, Pastor Joel Urshan. Pastor Urshan, you doing well today? I am doing well. Good. We uh, we took a week off last week uh, being at General Conference for the UPCI in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, ran into some people uh, who listen and watch, and uh, we're just so thankful for people who listen and watch and tune in and uh, give us feedback and tell us what they'd like to hear and are just encouraged by um, the fruitful vine. Uh, it is fun to do a podcast uh, with my pastor, but it's, you know, we do this for, we do this for people to get a benefit out of it. And we, right. we hope that that is happening Yes, for, for anyone out there yes. listening and watching. So I took off some time for that, but it was good to be a general conference, yeah. powerful, encouraging time. A great conference, yeah. great preaching, um, amazing preaching and uh, so many great things, a great attendance to the conference. And, uh, and as you mentioned, just a lot of great feedback from people who are watching and listening to the Fruitful Vine. And that was fun yeah. to just interact with people and hear from them. Yeah. And so thank you for watching, and we, we hope to be a blessing. Yeah, amen. Uh, beautiful time here in Cincinnati. Yes, a lot of wonderful things happening uh, locally here at our church. Yes, uh, you can just kind of see the hand of God starting to uh, just push some things forward and move yeah. some things. And sometimes fall can feel like um, you know settling back into a groove with school and work and yeah. um, whatever. But yeah, it's kind of cool to just start seeing some things happen. Yeah. Just a wonderful time to be in the kingdom of. God. It's harvest time. It is harvest. Well, yeah. come on now. Yeah. And, and, and fall, fall. once that routine sets back in, it, it, there's a little bit of a harvesting, even on a spiritual level, Yeah. as people begin to refocus their minds toward um, the things of God, you know, not that they don't during the summer, but yeah. a refocusing of uh, routine and priority. Yeah. There, there's harvest that comes from that. Yeah. Time to get back to work. Yeah. It's exactly. the best work. Yes. It's the best work. Uh, the Urshan family has been involved in the best work uh, for quite some time. We've talked about a couple Urshan family stories, and and you're probably never going to be able to get away, uh, you personally, from talking about uh, the work of God in your life and then also the work of God in your family because that's just that's personal. That's, that's how you got here. Uh, so we're going to kind of continue weaving in some Urshan family stories and uh, maybe even some some origin stories. Um, just because your last name's Urshan doesn't mean you 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 know you hit the ground running at three and start start preaching. Right. I mean, some of you did actually, yeah. but <laughs> but but how did some of those how did some of those stories start? Your grandpa, how did he start preaching? Your great grandpa, how did he start preaching? How did how did that yeah. all come about? Well, you know, that's just it. The, the um, it's such a, a, a wonderful blessing uh, that the Lord has given. Uh, to our family, and it did come from that man, my great grandfather, who gave us all to God. And uh, but you know, as as time would go on, and I think now he was born in the eighteen eighties, so we're a hundred and forty years from when he uh, first drew a breath, and uh, and and began to he began to serve the Lord when he was about in his early 20s, early to mid-20s. And, um, and from that point until now, just amazing to see what the Lord can do. That's really not a lot of time lapse, but, but it's just an amazing thing to watch how God can bless people. And I think it's important, uh, you know, we've, we've received requests for Urshan family stories, and yeah. I think we even talked about preachers that have influenced you know, my life, for instance, and, yeah. and those of you watching, you have preachers who have influenced your life. And it's I think it's important to remember that those lives of people that have that have just poured themselves out to the work of God, and we're all doing that in some way or another that are serving the Lord. All of us are ministering. All of us are engaged in His work. It's all kingdom work. Um, all work can be kingdom work and should be kingdom yeah. work. And, and so, but it's important to remember that <clears throat> these are lives of people that are very um, normal. They're just normal lives. And, but 
they are able to, to step into the glories of God and see great things accomplished for the kingdom of God. Um, but we talked a little bit about my great-grandfather, how that he was in Chicago, received the Holy Ghost. Um, um, I think we talked about when he went over to, to Persia. Um, my, my grandfather, his son, uh, was, of course, a pastor's son in New York City. He lived in Chicago. Uh, he was in New York City with his dad. But while he was in Chicago, my grandfather was actually uh, being uh, sought out by the Chicago Cubs. Uh, no way. Yeah, he was. Hold the phone. I didn't know this. This yeah, is a, yeah, this is a new was. one. Yeah, he was actually training with them. No way. He was. And what position did he play? Pitcher. No kidding. Yeah, he was actually a really good pitcher, and um, and he enjoyed pitching. In fact, I just received a picture. Uh, a text message came through. It is a picture from Brother Stan Gleason, our assistant general superintendent. Wow. And there's a picture of my grandfather at the Minnesota camp meeting, Camp Galilee in Minnesota, and uh, he's pitching. And behind him is Brother Gleason as a young man. That's cool. And Brother Gleason, I don't know if he was a second baseman or a shortstop, but there's that there's that little moment there where Grandpa, as a, even as a preacher and as a, a, he would have either been assistant general superintendent, probably was assistant general superintendent of the East at that time. Yeah. And Brother Gleason, who's one of the young people there, yeah. would become the assistant general superintendent of the West. Yeah. Kind of a neat That's cool. uh, thing. That's cool. But Grandpa uh, was able to to just kind of play softball with the uh, with the ministers there, and he pitched. But he was an excellent pitcher. My great grandfather knew he had a call of God on his life, and said, um, "Well, we're getting you out of Chicago." <laughs> wow! And took him to New York City. Took the whole family to New York City, and um, and and there was a great work done in New York City. And my grandfather, though, he, he, he was not going to go into the ministry. He was going to look elsewhere, do other things, had some pretty high uh, ambitions. And, and to be truthful, my grandfather had, he had a unique favor of God on his life to where he just was very blessed. And he had a natural poise about him. He had a, a presence about him that came from the Lord. But he, he could have been successful in any field yeah, that he would have that he would have uh, gone into, and but but he, so he was actually in pre med. He was going to to uh, pre uh, doing studies to go into medical school. He wanted to be a doctor, hmm. and and as he was preparing to do this, he came down with tuberculosis, and at that time, tuberculosis was, I mean, it was somewhat like a, the COVID of their day. Yeah, and. Um, I mean, people were dying of tuberculosis, and, and there was no real capacity to, to cure it. And he thought that he would, um, there, was a, there was a time, I mean, it was really was worse than COVID. He was, at a, he was a young man, and he was uh, in a TB ward uh, at one point, and uh, they thought he would die. He, he really did think that he was going to die. And uh, he, my, my great-grandfather came to him, and said, uh, as he was running from the call of God in his life, he came to him and said, where to now, Jonah? Wow. Where to now? And uh, that was kind of the moment that my grandfather decided, I need to, I need to start preaching the word of God. So he, he began preaching. And, uh, you know, he went through those beginning stages of preaching ministry, as everybody does. It, it didn't come natural, per se. Um, everybody has to develop that. And so don't be discouraged in if you are one who feels a call to ministry and you are you launching into it and it doesn't feel like it's going the way you'd hoped. Uh, try your hand at it and and pour yourself into the work of God. Find a soul to teach the word of God to and 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 pray over them and lead them, disciple them, lead them to salvation. Uh, my father, who was the son of, of course, my grandfather. Uh, he wasn't going to be a preacher. He was going to be a a, a teacher. He wanted to. He has. He had his bachelor's degree in history, mm. and he wanted to be a teacher. Uh, but the Lord called him into the ministry. He was a he was a, a soul winner. He was a one who really poured himself into reaching lost souls. Um, 
I think I may have mentioned this in a previous episode, but he taught the Word of God to his theology professor and ended up baptizing him in Jesus' name. Dr. Weber was filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost at Calvary Tabernacle. Mm. Uh, He witnessed to the editor of the Indianapolis Star, and my dad was like 19 years old, and baptized him in Jesus' name. And... And he was, uh, that's what he was busy doing. He, he didn't feel confident to get up in the pulpit and preach. Sure. But he had a ministry, and he was doing that ministry. And I, if you feel called to preach, the first place to, to start is in ministering to people, because it's all about people. Yeah. Whether you're in the pulpit or at a, at a dining room table or at a cubicle, um, people, it's about people ministering to the needs of people and, and, and ministering to their needs with the Word of God. And so he, he wrote an article in the Indianapolis Star, um, and it was about, the, uh, it was about the, the power of the Holy Ghost. Hmm. And it was this excellent article. He was, I think he was about 19 years of age at the time. And he just had his name down as Nathaniel Urshan. Well, he was Nathaniel Paul Urshan, and my, right. my grandfather was Nathaniel Andrew Urshan. Yeah. But he just listed his name as Nathaniel Urshan. And my grandfather started getting all these, uh, all this feedback from the city. Appreciated the article that you wrote. Phone calls were coming in. They weren't getting text messages in those days. No, no. But phone calls were coming in. And they were saying, really appreciated that article that you uh, wrote in the Indianapolis Star. It was out- outstanding. And my grandfather was trying, just trying to rehearse his thoughts and think, did I write an article and <laughs> forgot about it? And come to find out it was his son, mm. my dad. And he was 19, and he did such a great job. My grand, that's when my grandfather realized, oh, he's, he's got a ministry. He's, there's, there's, a, uh, there's really something special happening here. And so my dad's ministry began with just a love for souls, just a teaching of lost souls. And uh, he put that into us. And, you know, uh, you, I've shared my story of how I started when I was very young, um, preaching the Word of God. My brother uh, began preaching um, when he was... He, he preached some when he was younger, uh, but he really, really accepted and embraced his call at uh, about the time that he... A little before he went to Bible college. And uh, went to Bible college and came back and was preaching and and um, just really beginning to, to lay the foundation for his ministry. But he had this desire to go start a church. It, did, it was just something in him wanted to put his hands in the soil and, and, and start a church. Yeah. So God called him to Fort Myers, Florida, and he put everything he had into that. Yeah. And, um, and at one point he was teaching 18 Bible studies a week. Uh, and that was probably last week, something like that. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's just and, been a part of who he is. And every week from then till now. Yeah, yes. yeah. It, exactly. That's who he is. Yeah. And and the people that he has, he has touched and taught Bible studies to and baptized and prayed through to the Holy Ghost, and then the ones that they have gone on to minister to in other countries, foreign countries, whole churches and networks of churches have come from his ministry there, not to mention other places. Mm-hmm. And... And so, uh, but but when he began preaching, it, he had those normal experiences of of trying his hand at it and putting his shoulder to the plow. I remember when he left to go to Florida, uh, versus when he came back the following year. He returned home to Indiana and preached at a conference. And when he got up to preach, uh, after being engaged in home missions for a year. It was amazing just the power of the anointing of God that was on him. He already had a strong anointing when he left. But that year of home missions and that the seasoning that comes from being in the field and yeah. doing the work of the Lord, man, when he took that pulpit, he preached a message called Till the Whole is Leavened. And it was <laughs> it still is one of the great messages that I've ever heard. I mean, uh, just a remarkable message. And the concept is that leaven leavening the whole lump is what we think of in, in terms of sin 
and, and, and typically that has a negative connotation. But, but there is a positive spin to it in the fact that the leaven is, is, a, is aggressive. It's an aggressive uh, element, and it, and it overtakes. Mm-hmm. And he tied it to the principle of the, the woman in Jesus' parable who hid, who hid uh, the measure and three measures of leaven. Mm-hmm. And, and when, t- until the whole was leavened, and she began to he began to draw the parallel to from that parable and that statement to the whole was leavened and likened it to reaching people mm. we're going to reach one person at a time until this agent has spread throughout the world just till the whole is leavened when do we stop till the whole is leavened when do we when do we quit not until the whole is leavened yeah. we just keep we just keep uh, doing the work of God, and that's how He approached ministry. That's powerful, isn't that amazing? Yeah. And so, it's it's really it's always been inspirational to me because we we really didn't hit the ground running, but we but there were those moments where we hit our face and praying and seeking God yeah. and just asking the Lord to to help us and open up the windows of heaven. You know, I, I began preaching young. I was 10 when I preached my first message, and it wasn't any good. I mean, there's video footage of it somewhere out in the ether that we're trying to... And if you would like to see that video yeah. footage, <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. we don't know where it is. The link is I've the, never seen it. The but link I'd, is in the bio yeah, of the nowhere. In, yeah, <laughs> I would love to see that It was that rough. It was rough. But I was, a, I was this 10-year-old kid, and I what had happened, I had received a revelation of the oneness of God. Yeah. And I just couldn't, I had to get it out there. It was like the fire shut up in my bones. My Sunday school teachers were Tom and Janice White, dear friends uh, of our church, of our family there in the church in Indiana. They let me preach in the Sunday school class. <clears throat> it was awful. I didn't do well. But for the next four years, I, I just kept trying and kept trying. And I would travel with my dad and he would preach to congregations and I would uh, preached to the children, and then it was about four years into that that one day the power of God fell upon me while I was preaching, and and man, I just I had felt that in worship, I had felt that in worship, but I I couldn't translate that into preaching, and in worship I would just get lost in praising God, I would get carried away in the in the presence of the Lord. And, and, but preaching to me was different. I would get up and try to preach and I was, it was stale and it was, and it was segmented and frac- fractured and factioned and it just didn't flow. Yeah. But that was the day I realized, wait, I can, I can worship while I preach. Yeah. So in my preaching to this day, I do a lot of worshiping in my preaching and so when people ask me, you know, why do you raise your voice or why do you <clears throat> why do you get so excited? It's it's cuz I'm I'm not so much preaching as I am worshiping. Yeah. As as pure speaking goes, I don't know how to do that so well. Yeah. But I do know how to worship God and I love to worship God. And so he he gave me the great joy in life of being able to worship him uh as what I do. And I I just, that's what I want to spend the rest of my life doing is opening up his word and exalting his name to people. And I, th- right now I'm so encouraged by this generation of young ministers. And we have young men and women that are rising up to declare the word of the Lord. And it is a beautiful thing to see. Mm-hmm. And I want them to be encouraged. I want, I want everybody listening to this podcast to be encouraged in your walk with God, be encouraged in the work God has called you to do and the ministry that you are anointed to do because you're, it's going to take time to develop. It's going to take time for line to get upon line, precept to get upon precept, for the here a little and the there a little. But let that unfold. In your patience, possess ye your souls. And know that some of the ones that uh, have influenced your life, in my case, my family, I had a front row seat. Sure to people who I knew were normal people but operated in an extraordinary anointing. 
and that gave me that gave me that that understanding and that confidence that that God can use me mm-hmm. and God can use you and uh, there, there's just no there's just no reason to back up or turn around go forward yeah. go forward and and um, and and you know in our case I'm thankful I'm thankful so thankful for a great grandfather who who planted it and I'm thankful for a grandfather who expanded it and I'm grateful for a father who preserved it and passed it on and I'm thankful now that my brother and my sister and myself and our children and grandchildren yeah can can do the same for a new generation and uh, so it's a wonderful it's a wonderful life there is no substitute for serving the Lord. It, it just keeps getting better, even, even when there are challenges. We know that all things work together for the good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. Yeah. Amen. I, uh, I was talking with somebody after the Fruit of the Spirit seminar that you taught uh, at General Conference, and, and I assumed and uh, presumed for you, they were like, does he have notes today? And I said, Probably not. I don't know if you did or not. I'm I'm assuming you didn't. But I I I, I know sometimes people just want to know like how do you do what you do, uh, and maybe even uh, your brother Nathan as well. Your sister Kristen teaches Bible studies all the time, and I think I don't know if you guys use notes all the time, but I've heard you say before, I'm just praising God to the people, and and people are always impressed. Um, by you and by Nathan and Kristen on the platform and off the platform. And it's, it's not because there's a different person on the platform preaching. You're praising God to others on the platform or you're praising God to others in your daily life. And, uh, and sometimes people just want to know the secret formula to, to your preaching. And I've heard you say that before. I'm just praising God to the people. Um, and if you are trying to be impressive, you might not be, no. <laughs> but it's when you just praise God genuinely and authentically yes. from the Word and from your heart. That's what will leave impressions, and that that is what impresses people. And that that's a a lineage and a heritage that has been passed down to you. And congratulations! I think since the last time we've yes. had a podcast, there's there's another new there is an uh, addition addition to the the Urshan Glasgow family. Yes. Uh, Joel Ezra. Glasgow, yes. a new yes. grandson. That's right. Uh, so an, another person, another, and, and they and, hand that off to, and they and they named him Joel. Yeah, Joel Ezra. And uh, I told my daughter and son-in-law Zach and Anna. I said, "Man, I said J. E. Glasgow sounds yeah. like a good camp meeting preacher name." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but we're blessed. We have little Alette and little Joel, and uh, we're thankful to God for his for his blessings. And Sophia's at Urshan College. Yeah. Um, you didn't name that one. They named it, but, but, but again, just the, yes. the, the power of, um, the Urshan family Thank the and, Lord. and honoring, uh, what they've done for this movement and for this generation and the generations before us. And, uh, we're just so thankful. It's all about souls. I've probably heard Nathan before say he would rather be teaching a Bible study across yes. the dinner table than, uh, preaching to a thousand people who already know yeah. the scripture. <laughs> he, right. he, it's, and your sister Kristen and yourself, you guys just genuinely love people and and love sharing the word of God with them and love just talking and connecting with people. Praise God. Well, I thank you. I thank you for saying those very kind things. Um, and uh, and I pray and hope that can we can live up to that, you know, that we can we can live up to that. But and I thank you for that. Uh, and and that is the key. Yeah. Loving God and loving your neighbor. That's the key. And upon these hang all the law. Everything else hangs off those That's two right. things. Yeah. If you love him enough, you will also love your neighbor as That's yourself. Right. And everything else yes. uh, will follow suit. Amen. Amen. This has been such a, a blessed time today talking about the things of God. Uh, we love you, Pastor Urshan. Thank you for being here. We thank you, viewer, watcher, listener, Tree of Life member, uh, Fruitful Vine uh, constituency. We're just so grateful for you and for what God is doing in your life. Uh, We'll see you next time. God bless you in Jesus' name.